Hello, and welcome to part one of Cube Rescue, a series about taking an unloved Cube 3D printer uh, that was dumped in the rain to die um, and uh, saving it to give it a new life as an actually useful 3D printer. It, these printers are pretty cool. They have a very uh, well-designed mechanical design. They have a um, questionable uh, electrical design, mostly due to software, but I'll be showing you what you can do to make it as useful as possible, including uh, custom firmware and a little script that I wrote that lets you use uh, G-code files slice with Cura. Now, uh, let's commence five minutes of random cube rambling from uh, my first um, experiences setting up this printer at home. So, Look what I found the other day. This is a uh, 3D Systems Cube Pro 3D printer. Um, I have the tape over there because its name is the name of the institution that I got it from, and I um, don't want you guys to know that because you could cyberstalk me that way. Um, so I found this in the rain next to a dumpster. Um, so with, with a, a sign on the front that said, please discard. Um, so they were getting rid of this. Um, and I, I can't exactly blame them. Um, it's been painfully unreliable. Um, and you can't buy the filament anymore. So um, actually, before they had gotten rid of it, um, they had had me uh, flash a custom firmware. Um, so it's running. Um, we go to info here. Um, it's running firmware version 2.0, as you can see. Um, which is not the newest version, but it's the, the newest uh, version with the exploit that allows you to patch it. So uh, we actually downgraded the firmware, I think. I think it let us downgrade, or maybe we upgraded. Maybe they hadn't updated in a long time. I don't remember. I did it a couple years ago. Um, so yeah, yeah, a couple years ago, they had me um, flash a custom firmware. Um, they had one PLA cartridge, which... Um, is actually white. I, this is the original cartridge. This is PLA from 2015. It's very tired PLA. It probably needs to be... Uh, I mean, it works, but it's just, you know, filament ages. Um, it could probably... Uh, PLA is, is not particularly hydro, hydrophilic, but um, still, uh, five-year-old filament is... Eh. Um, so this is newer PLA, and again, because it's patched, it doesn't actually need the cartridge. And then this cartridge frame is just here to keep it up against the wall. And you can see it's running in there. Um, and the chip from the cartridge, because it needs the chip from the cartridge, but it doesn't actually read or write from the chip. It just needs it there. Well, it reads from it, but it doesn't write to it. It doesn't write that more filament was used. Um, so the, the chip is actually, um, if we pull this out awkwardly, um, you can see like I have a little foot there to keep the chip in place against the chip reader. Uh, so anyways, um, it need, you need to use an old version of their stupid proprietary slicer that's bad. Um, so I just installed that on my workshop computer. So if we spin around, um, you can see here um, that we have Cube Pro installation successfully completed. So if we click close, um, and go over to our start menu. We now have Cube Pro recently added. Um, so this is the software that we use. Um, it's terrible. It's a really out of date slicer. It does, yeah, 2.02 is the newest version and that one doesn't work with the patch. So we're not gonna use that. Um, and by the patch, I mean the hack. So anyways, we have Cube Pro, PrintJet 1 material. Uh, we can just set any type of PLA. Uh, PLA Coral. Um, PrintJet 1, yes, we only have one. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so the, these machines were available with up to three uh, PrintJets. So, but uh, this is the, the cheapest one with one. Still an expensive machine when it was new. Um, but, but not, you can see we have one extruder, you have spots for two more there. Um, there's the extruder down, and there's the uh, actual hot end down there. So anyways, um, yeah, it's a really big 
big printer. It weighs 90 pounds, so it was very fun moving it. Um, and the software is loaded up. So this is the software. Um, you can see that it's terrible. Um, it has like the Microsoft Office uh, ribbon style thing at the top. Um, it has a weird slicer view. Um, it doesn't let you choose the temperature. You just have to use whatever temperature they think's right, which means I can only print PLA in this because I only have a PLA chip. And actually changing the chips is a pain anyways. Um, but I wouldn't want to print anything other than PLA because it doesn't have a heated build plate. Um, it's that, it's that old. Um, it has a heated build chamber though, which is kind of cool. Um, and then it, it's, I do want to upgrade the machine because the machine is crazy sol solid. Um, so